OBE syllabus and instructional design last August uh, under Dr. Sana, formulating course objectives from program out outcomes by Dr. Atienza, and organizing content and instructional resources with TPAC applications again with Dr. Sana last October. So for today, our topic will be on the development of instructional materials. And just to introduce our speaker for this afternoon, she graduated here in the University of the Philippines, Manila, with a degree in BS Physical Therapy and Master in Health Professions in Education. She is uh, Master in Health Professions Education, MHPED, here at NDTP. She is currently taking her PhD in Education majoring in educational research and evaluation at UP Diniman. Um, I believe he, she's already at the last course, uh, last track ng course niya uh, before dissertation. So aside from being an associate professor seven here at NTTC, she is also an active member of the Phys Philippine Physical Therapy Association and also the head of the special interest group on education of PPTA. She is also a member of the Techno, Techno, Technical Committee on PT Education of the Commission on Higher Education. She has been a resource person and facilitator in many OBE seminars, workshops, and conferences like the Inter-University Workshop on OBE for Health Professionals conducted by NTTCHP, Workshop on OBE Teaching Strategies for Members of the PACOP in Bacolod City. Designing Backward, Instructional Design and Implementing the OBE Syllabi for Faculty Members of the College of Allied Medical Professions of the Cebu Doctors University in Cebu City. And lastly, the Curricular and Instructional Alignment with Outcome-Based Education for the Faculty Members of the College of Medicine of University of Perpetual Health System in Binyan. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome our very own College Secretary and Coordinator for International Linkages of the National Teacher Training Center for the Health Profession, Professor Maria Elizabeth M. Grajeda. Hello, can you see me? <laughs> um, I wanted to just stay here sa baba, no, because we'll have some interaction uh, so that I'm, I'm more mobile. Okay? So, um, thank you for coming. I hope you can move forward because I'm not so sure kung nag-work yung scanner if you're too far. No? I'm, I'm not that confident. No? This is actually the first time I tried this. I picked this up from uh, a presenter that we had when I attended, I think in, it was in Cebu, no? And I was so excited, no? <laughs> Scanning the codes, no? Tuan -tua ako. So I was thinking, baka mag, baka mag work with you, no? So um, if it doesn't work, um, you can just take a picture of it and maybe scan it later. Um, pagdating sa bahay, or when you have stronger Wi-Fi, because I'm also not confident that our Wi-Fi is that strong. Okay? Um, but you can just take a picture of it. Uh, I think the lecture will also be available in our website, so later on you can also go back to it. You know? And I think the video will be available at face in the Facebook uh, page of, uh, Facebook group of NTTCHP. Okay? So, um, I've been tasked today to talk about instructional materials. No? Um, actually, I just celebrated my birthday last Sunday. Thank you very much. And I realized that mahal na mahal talaga ako ng NTTC kasi ang regalo nila sa akin, mag-lecture daw ako. <laughs> Miligyan ako ng trabaho. No? Ganyan, ganyan talaga magmahal din sa NTTC. <laughs> so, uh, so, Hence, that's why I am here. No? I, and I was telling them, bakit ako ang mag-lecture ng instructional materials? Uh, may kayo ba ako dyan? Eh, hindi ako teki. Gen X kasi ako. No? I belong to the Generation X. And you know that Gen X people, though we look young, 
uh, hindi kami best friends ng technology. No? Because personally, I am not confident that something that I something that is digital is there. No? I still sometimes, mas gusto ko pa rin yung librong totoo or yung handouts na tunay. No? But slowly, I am now parang okay na rin naman pala. No? Uh, and so, I think maybe because I might be the best example of a person who is not really techy, but I'm really just open to learn new things, no? and open to new things, open to experimentation. Like, this whole lecture is like an experiment for me. No? So, let's look into instructional materials. My, there's only one, simple lang naman yung, ano ko eh, yung goal ko for this uh, session, that hopefully at the end of this session, you will also become a little bit more open to looking at different kinds of instructional materials. No? Where may it be low-tech or high-tech, and how the OBE principles can be applied to these instructional materials. No? I know that every day as teachers, maraming maraming kayong ginagamit na instructional materials, right? Okay. So what are instructional materials? So these are the tools and the resources that we use. Okay? And that, uh, like for example, yung chalk ba, in instructional material yon, yung laptop itself is that a material no or is the whiteboard marker and the whiteboard no are this material because these are also tools no hindi pa siguro no because we when we talk about instructional materials kasi may word na mater uh, material kaya isipin natin baka yung mga whiteboard papel no pwede no but may word kasi yung instruction so that means kulang so these are the tools and the resources that actually engage the students with learning and engage the students with the content okay, so that they become active in learning and active in terms of assessment. So, yung ibang mga materials lang yung iba. Okay, equipment. The laptop itself is an equipment. But it's not an assurance that if the school buys you the most high-tech laptop, eh, magkakaroon ka ng magiging successful ka in OBE, no? Uh, hindi din, no? Because it is the actual development of the material that's important, no? You not really have to be super high-tech uh, to be successful, okay? So, instructional materials need not to be online, no? Baka isipin natin para maging ma-apply yung OBE principles to developing instructional instructional materials we need to be uh, uh, on the net no or we need to be online always no hindi naman no because this can also be these materials can also be developed for use also in face to face sessions no so without really having to go to go online or having to be uh, in the net uh, always okay so uh, Ibig sabihin lang, instructional materials, these are tools and resources that we use in teaching. No, no need to be high-tech really. Pero kung kaya, edi okay din. No? Okay. So let's, uh, kumain na ba kayo ng lunch? Yeah, okay. So siguro may energy pa, no? So Claire, can you distribute the ano? So we'll distribute, uh, not and everybody naman will be able to join no because this is a really very big group i only need mga 20 uh willing <laughs> participants no but you can work as a group no by rows there are maybe 10 here and then 10 here on the other side okay one paper per row tama ba row yeah one paper per row so there will give out one piece of paper and one marker per row. Magturuan na lang kayo kung sino yung <laughs> yung sacrificial lamb ninyo. Okay? But remember, NTTCHP is a very safe environment. No? This is a very safe place. I know if you've been coming here for our seminars in the past, you'll know that uh, this space is a very safe environment. Okay? All right. Okay, so what I want you to do is to give me examples 
of instructional materials. I know even if you, if, if, hindi nyo pa nababasa, kasi ginagamit nyo na yan, no? So, I want you to give me examples, or kung wala kayong idea, or kung may idea kayo, kung ano man yan, no? Just write it down, no? But ang, but kailangan, ah, uh, hindi magkapare-pareho, no? So, mamaya, pag nag-reveal tayo ng answers at may kapareho yun sa inyo, kailangan yung baguhin yung answer, no? We'll give you a new sheet of paper, no? Basta kailangan hindi tayo pare-pareho. So, you try to be as uh, creative as you can. Yung feeling nyo, hindi maiisip ng iba, mas safe. Okay? So, lahat ba meron? Ah, nakabigay ka na, Claire? Naka-20 na? Sa kabila. Meron na rin? Sige. Ah, okay. Ah, pwede mag-raise ng hand yung mga sacrificial lamb. Uh, nasa yung may hawak ng marker and pen? Can you raise your hand? Yan. Okay. Alright. Ah, sige. So, go. So, you just think of just one. Ah. Make your writing big so that everybody can see. Um, just write on that piece of paper. I-occupy nyo yung buong space ng papel. Sa kabilang side. Ayon. Ayaw nyo tanggapin, no? Doon sa likod, meron na? Yan sa left side? Uy, 20 lang, ha? Kasi sobra yan. Okay na? Ah, sige. Sige, just write it down. And then once you're finished, can you come here? Here and show everybody your paper. Dito na lang sa side na to. So titingin kayo dito, ha? Sino na yung tapos? Just come here. Ah, so mga, so mga kakarating lang na binigyan ng papel and marker, uh, you can work with your karo. You're just going to think of examples of instructional materials. No? Ano ba sa tingin nyo yung sinasabing instructional materials? Ano na yung meron tayo? Google site. No? Wow. Dito meron workbook. Okay, workbook. Sabi niya, role-playing in simulation. Okay. Uh, video presentation or film showing. Okay. Mga apps. Okay. Ah, mga young ones kasi ito. No? Paper and journals. No? Paper meaning research paper. Okay. And then we have flipped video. Okay, or video used in flipped classroom. Uh, we have RCT journals, medyo same, pero sige, let's take this as research and then you as journal articles. And then, let's see, videos in YouTube, oh, sige, pwede na rin. Meron pa dito, ano pa dito? Um, group simulation room or multimedia. Bitin ng konti yung multimedia, pero sige na. And then, we have learning management system. Meron pa? Okay, interview of experts and e-books. Okay, o palakpakan nyo naman sila. Okay. <laughs> meron pa? Meron pa ba? O, oh, sige. So, all of those are instructional materials. Okay, tanin nyo? U uwi na kayo, okay na pala eh. <laughs> Pwede na kayo umuwi, okay na tayo. Yun po yung test eh. Kasi pag okay kayo doon, pwede na pong umuwi. No? Okay. Alright. So, those are examples of instructional materials. No? So, why are instructional materials? Because important, no? Because instructional materials will provide us, no? Or will provide the students or the learners with the core content or the core information. So, actually, when you talk of materials, instructional materials, it is actually the content of the course or the lesson. No? Na andun siya, nakapaloob siya dun sa material. Iba-iba lang yung way of delivery or we use different media and we use different formats to be able to deliver this content. No? So, uh, but, so therefore, our materials should have to have a uh, carry the breadth and the depth of the content no? kasi it has to be relevant to the lesson. Okay? Why? Because sometimes we might be too enamored at a certain video. Sabi kasi maglagay ng video. Sabi mag gumamit ng mga website. No? Ang dami mong binigay na website. Hindi naman siya 
related doon sa lesson or doon sa objectives. It's not achieving the objectives. So kahit na super high tech ka, if you're not achieving the objectives, uh, may mali pa rin doon. No? No, hindi natin na-achieve yung ating uh, outcome. So lumilihis tayo doon sa principles na outcome-based education. Okay? So it should carry the breadth and the depth of the content okay? and it should be relevant to your objectives. So because the content that is provided by the instructional materials, like any pizza, dapat pinag-aagawan yan, di ba? So students should be excited about the content so that they are able to interact with the, with the content. Okay? That's why you use certain materials. Bakit mo ba yan pinopost sa YouTube? Para mas excited ang estudyante, no? mas, mas maka-interact siya. No? Um, but ka nag tatanong ng mga stimulating questions while you are lecturing because you want them to be awake and to be interacting with you and the material while you are uh, giving out the lesson. No? You want students to actually experience the content. No? Ma-experience nila yung material. Ma-experience nila yung, yung laman ng lesson. Okay? Because through experiencing the content, hopefully they'll be able to later on be able to apply the content. No? So we want our students to be active learners. No? And we want them to always be interacting and be uh, engaged with the material. And that's what your instructional materials are for. Okay? So imagine nyo na lang that the content is your pizza and your material is the flavor of the pizza. No? So you want the flavor to be mabenta. No? And you want students to, you know, enjoy it, be able to eat it with pleasure, but at the same time, in the end, still be able to achieve the objectives and still be able to learn something from it. Kasi ayaw mo rin naman na uh, natuwa nga sila, pero in the end, wala naman silang natutunan. No? Okay, so that's why instructional materials need to have a lot, there's a lot of planning involved in developing instructional materials. So these are not something that you just come up with uh, like kung bukas yan, eh, mamaya meron ka ng material. No? Although siguro kung sobrang galing ka na <laughs> at alam mo na kung saan kukunin, pwede. No? But if you have planned for it for uh, some time, no? giving it some time to think about it, no? to really assess all these available materials or nakadecide ka na kung kukuha ba ako na available or will I actually develop my own. No? So you, you're able to go through that process of evaluating these already available materials and deciding in the end which to use, why you're going to use it, how you're going to use it, and what will be the needed resources when you're going to use it already. Okay? So it it's hindi masamang magplano. No? Uh, wala namang mawawala sa inyo if you take some time to really sit down and plan for these materials. No? I know that sometimes you just get them from the one who has taught the subject before. No? I may ibibigay sa yung folder, nandun na lahat. Minsan, you don't even take the time to read it man lang. No? Or basta ito yung mga pinapabasa kong sabi nyo, journals. No? These are your journal artic articles that I've given to my class before. So, baka sana mabasa mo man lang no, before you really give it out to your students para ikaw mismo alam mo kung anong laman uh, and you've assessed na, ah, oo nga, bagay talaga ito. Kasi later, sometimes, binigay sa'yo, no, ginamit na from the other class, pero nung tinitingnan mo, parang, parang medyo off. No? So, you want to modify it. No, ikakat mo, ito lang ang kukunin ko, masyado siyang mahaba, no, it's too long, it's too complicated, students will not understand it. All of those things will only come out in the planning process. Okay. So, usually, ikaw muna. No? Kasi mahirap gumamit or mag-develop ng isang material that you yourself have not experienced also. No? So, uh, you'd have to plan for it no? okay. and develop it. So, there are basically, actually, iba-iba kasing pag-divide nila or pag-classify sa materials, no? Because ang dami nga, eh, no? There's, there's really too many. But uh, I think this is the most simple, no? Looking at it ng 
three types. No? One would be our traditional resources. Not using traditional in a very negative uh, sense, but traditional meaning uh, something that we've been used to, to doing or to using. Uh, and they're still very useful. No? These are the traditional resources. And then you have your graphic organizers. And then we have your digital media. Okay. Sige. Patayuin ko kayo ulit. Ha. So yung mga sacrificial lamb, ilabas nyo ulit yung mga papel nyo kanina. And I want you, dun po sa board na yon, may tatlo, no? Sabi natin, traditional resource, and then we have graphic organizers, and digital media. So I want you to uh, put your paper under the appropriate heading, no? Sa so, tingin nyo, saan ba papasok yung hawak nyo, no? Kunwari, naglagay kayo dyan ng journals. Saan siya papasok? Uh, yung YouTube, saan natin ilalagay yan? No? Yung learning management system, where will we put that? May tape po doon on the left side, and then you just put, okay. Okay, ano pa? Okay. Okay, so let's see, no? Hindi mabenta yung graphic organizer. Parang sabi na, ano ba yun? Yan nilalagay nila sa... Kasi minsan yung iba dyan parang pwede sa kahit saan, no? Uh, in any the two. Okay, so sabi nila, thank you to the lambs. <laughs> so, yung traditional, nilagay nila dito yung workbook, yung mga paper and journals, uh, role-playing simulation. Actually, ito depende kasi ito, no? Um, if you're talking about the 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 script itself for the role play, yun yung material. But if it's the actual role playing, at gagawin nila sa classroom, nagiging strategy yun, no? But if, let's say, the role play is video recorded, then mapupunta siya doon sa digital media, no? Okay. And then you have your textbooks, of course, and then, uh, of course, the journals. Hindi talaga mabenta ito. Yung digital media, andyan ng e-books. Actually, itong e-book, Pwede pa rin niya mapunta dito sa traditional, no? Because actually, when we talk of traditional, ito yung mga reading only, visual, isang sense lang. no? So, something that you read, yun nga lang because now, uh, you can read, pwede yung pag nagbasa ka, book or e-book, no? But actually, you're really just using still uh, single sense, no? Ito kasi dito sa digital media, multiple, sensory na dito. So therefore my audio, my visual, my So ito yung so so ito yung kaya medyo ano siya multiple sensory involved, no? So kaya yung e-books minsan we can still put it under here in traditional pa rin, no? Nag-iba lang ng format, okay? And then of course the Google Sites kasi ito gumaganon ganun eh, pwedeng gumagalaw, no? You can put videos, iba-ibang classing formats, no? Itong interview of experts, again, if you if you videotape this or video record it and put it in your website or your learning management system or give it to your students, then it becomes a digital media. Of course, your video, your learning management system, the different apps are there. Um, the films that you, you use are the YouTube. Okay, very good. So can you give yourselves a round of applause again? Pasensya na kayo, wala kasing, hindi ako nakapagpabili ng price, kaya puro round of applause lang. No? Puri na lang ang price niyo. Okay. So what are traditional resources? These are usually reading material. So kasi ito yung pinaka madali, no? pinaka simple no? uh, materials that are read. So it just engages a single sense organ, no? which is your, your, your eyes for reading. The graphic organizers na hindi mabenta, 
are materials that provide visual representation or presentation of the content. No? What are some of the examples kaya? Models, yes, yung mga models, ano pa? Pictures, uh, hindi lang pictures, but it has to be, let's say, like a graph, a diagram, a chart, a concept map, a mind map, a web, you know? so because what is important in graphic organizer is that it should be able to show students the relationship between ideas. Okay? Nakadayag. So parang yung bin, kung yung traditional resource dahil ano siya, text, no? Kanya-kanyang buo yan ng conceptualization in their own minds, no? But pag binigyan mo na sila ng graphic organizers or when you let them make a graphic organizer, uh, hindi lang siya simpleng reading, no? Because they have to, you know, understand what they read and put it together and represent it in a diagram, in a map, in a, you know, to show relationships. Okay. Kaya siya tinawag na graphic organizer. Okay. And then the digital media, again, ito sabi natin, yung basa ina-engage niya yung iba-ibang senses natin. So we hear something, we see something, plus may visual. Kaya, kaya nga yung, when you give a lecture, di ba, you're, you're talking so students can hear something and then, then naririnig ka rin nila at the same time and then at the same time you're showing certain pictures or diagrams and show, showing relationship of concepts. So parang you are really actually engaging all of them, no? all of the senses. So let's look at traditional resources. So these are mostly your reading materials. And so what is important, hindi lang naman in traditional, no? but in, in all of these kinds of materials, selection is a very important aspect here. No? Kaya siya important sa traditional resources because most of the traditional resources are already existing, like books. No? Andiyan na yung libro eh. Ang tanong na lang eh, which book? No? Which textbook? Maybe before when I was back back when I was still studying PT. Uh, kasi may nakikita kami estudyante ko. So <laughs> back way back in the 80s. <laughs> ang libro namin, ano, uh sinisirok sang namin from our teacher, no? If if you go to even if you go to national, there's no PT book available. I remember our manual muscle testing book was only this thin. And we can only buy it from the old Alemar's book store here along Taft Avenue. Na wala na siya ngayon, no? At nauubusan pa ng copies. Tapos newsprint pa yon na ano. So we had to, if maubusan ka, you have to Xerox it, no? Wala. Wala kami masyadong books. But now, kahit saan pumunta, na-amaze ako kasi ang daming PT books, no? Unlike before, wala talaga. So, and daming available. And so, the challenge now for teachers is to choose and select and to guide students in selecting. No? Even librarians. Kasi, minsan ngayon, like when we're discussing sa TechCom, no? pag nag-discuss kami about oh, yung library, uh, mo ito, yung mga, mga requirements for libraries. No? Sometimes kasi, baka we're too... Uh, too much ano, on the counting of how many titles. How many, pero ang tanong talaga eh, ano ba yung mga titles na yan? Baka naman ang daming ang titles, but these titles are not really relevant. no? Or magagamit ba yan sa Pilipinas? No? Is it relevant to our situation? Is it something that will I, that is presented clearly, maganda yung, yung laman? No? Uh, kasi baka ang hinahanap na lang natin ay basta maka, makailang titles. No? So selection is really the key to any reading but even journals no sa dami ng journals na makikita mo yan key ka lang ng isang word and then it will come out thousands and thousands the key is to be able to select no what is it really that you need so therefore what is important is knowing what is your objective ano ba talaga yung gusto mong mangyari no what do you want your students to be able to achieve at the end of the activity. Kaya ka gumagawa ng isang material. No? Kunwari, sabi mo, uh, magpapavideo ako sa YouTube. Kasi minsan nauuna yung gagawin kesa dun sa para saan. No? Siguro bago muna natin isipin na mag, magbibigay ka ng 
assignment sa kanila na kukunin nila sa YouTube. Ano ba muna yung goal? No? Why are you doing that? What is the end goal? And is that really the best way to go? No? Yung ba yung, yun ba sa tingin mo yung pinakaparaan na ma-achieve yung ating goal? Kasi kailangan ba? O baka naman magbabasa sila, pwede na. No? So, we really need to be able to determine ano muna ang gusto natin no? before we really decide which one will be good for you. Okay. So, what are some of the things to consider when we're looking at traditional resources? Well, again, number one, kahit ano naman, eh, no? number one palagi yung, is it aligned with your outcome? No? Is it, yung ba yung kailangan mo? No? Will it achieve what you want to achieve? Second, is it engaging enough so that students will be, you know, ma-motivate sila? So if you give them a book at ang papabasa mo, chapters 1 to 20. Tapos tingnan mo, ano ba itong mga chapter 1 to 20 na to? Talaga bang, baka nasa first page pa lang, tulog na sila, no? I remember we had a book that was very thick, no? Del si Delisa dati, ma makapal na yon, no? So, e ewan ko ba, every time I start that book, tulog agad ako, no? Eh, ang kapal niya, ang sarap pa naman unanin, di ba? <laughs> Unan agad eh, no? Never ko yatang nabasa yun from cover to, that's, that's actually, I, I think, the only book I have not read from cover to cover. Kasi, na, ewan ko ba, nakakaantok siya talaga eh. So, maybe it's the way it's written, no? Uh, boring, maybe <laughs> it's too straightforward, no? hindi siya exciting. Okay. So, you ask yourself that, no? Is it engaging enough? Kasi kung kayo nakatulog, most probably, pati student, lalo ang estudyante makakatulog, di ba? And then the length of the material. Because you also have to see, is this too long or too short? No? Baka kasi ang concern mo lang, eh, but we have to cover the entire topic. No? Kailangan kasi makover natin lahat ng topics. No? Again, we're too, uh, too much, we're emphasizing too much on the content. content no? Basta makover ang content. Pero para saan? No? Ano ba yung pinaka-end goal natin? No? Why do we want that? So you have to look at the length of the material. Like if it's a journal article, titingnan mo, ilang pages ba yan? Kasi kung mga 25 pages, baka makatulog talaga yung estudyante dyan. So maybe try to choose journals that tama lang yung length no? so that students will be engaged and then uh, maybe ask questions so that while they're reading it, meron silang pinag-iisipan and they have a guide as to how they're going to read that article. Um, you look at the format. No? Ano yung media format? No? Again, because reading materials ngayon can have several formats. No, pwedeng actual. Ano ba yan? Like if it's a journal, what will you do? Are you going to Xerox that journal and give, it, give each one a copy? Or dahil nagtitipid ka, one copy per group of five? Ganun ba? Uh, Iaano mo ba yan? Uh, will you just post it in your learning management site and then you will, students will access it there? Ano ba yan? Will they go to a particular site and access doon? Ila, ibibigay mo ba in a CD, in a USB? Ano? Anong format? Anong format ang ititake niya? No? And, and so, because kung anong format, then you have to think about access. How will students be able to access this material? Okay. Uh, and then copyright is a very important thing to think about. No? Yan bang binibigay mong material, pinapagamit mo, is a copyrighted material no, na pwede ba yan, like kunwari, if it's going to be photocopied, no, if it's a book, it's going to be photocopied, pwede ba yun? No? Do you need permission to do that? So, because you need to know if you have to go through certain permissions to be able to do it. No? So, kung ayaw mong mag-seek ng permission because it's toxic, then you have to choose, no? again, sa selection, then choose something which is not copyrighted or which is free or which is accessible to everybody, no? yung open access na tinatawag. Okay. Now, because it's a reading material, the layout and the presentation is important because it's very difficult to read material that has very small font. Diba? Sometimes, dahil nagtitipid tayo, isisirox mo, tapos paliliitin mo, para magkasya sa long bond paper para isang papel lang no but hindi mabasa no or because sinirox natin dun sa 20 cents per page <laughs> kaya yung papel sobrang nipis nakikita yung likod hindi mo makita no so 
even the layout is important. So in choosing, you also have to choose ano yung okay yung pagka-present. Do you, do you need to change the layout so that it will be more engaging? Or choose materials that are already, you know, naka-layout na siya na maganda. No? Marami naman kayong mapagpipilian na ngayon. No? Unlike before, parang no choice. No? And of course, the cost. Of course, mas gusto natin yung libre. No? Kung, kung pwedeng libre, mas okay. Diba? Pero, libre, remember, ang libre, may hangganan kasi yan. No? That's why, you, if you notice, yung mga free na app, free na software, ito lang ang binibigay niya sa'yo na, oo. Or, maiksing time mo lang available. Or, imbis na ma-access mo lahat, ito lang ang pwede mong ma-access. Diba? Diba? Parang yung mga journals, diba? usually, ang ma-access mo lang abstract. To access the full article, you need to buy it. You know? So, kaya magdi-decide ka talaga, is it worth it? No? Worth bang magbayad ako? No? That's why you have to ask yourself, para saan ba talaga yan? No? Because if paying for it will help achieve the objectives, why not? Diba? Hindi naman sinasabing manggaling sa bulsa mo. No? But you can, you know, uh, request for it from the school. No? Because it's the It's the responsibility of the school. Pero dapat napag-isipan mo na yun, no? That's why we're saying, you need to plan ahead. Because if these are things that you will request from the school, sana na-request mo na prior. Or kung alam mo na nakuripot ang skwelahan mo and they will not give you, then ikaw magde-decide. I-willing ka ba? Or talagang just choose a one that is free. No? Kasi ganun talaga. No? Ganun ang mangyayari. So it's really a deciding Uh, a decision making process okay so these are examples of um saying uh, you can go low tech you can go high tech so ano yung low tech kunin mo yung mga journal articles na dati na ng mga dating nagturo tapos yun yung gamitin mo i-xerox mo pwede naman no as long as it's really useful no but if you want to be updated gusto mo yung updated pumunta ka sa internet because there's really a lot of of uh, articles that you will get there. But again, selection is the key. No? So go to, uh, because there are a lot of journals now that are open access, meaning walang bayad. No? They will give you the full articles uh, with no charge. Pero usually, it will really take time para makahanap ka ng magandang article. Kasi usually, yung mga libre, hindi gaanong magaganda. Di ba? Yung magaganda na kailangan mo, yun yung may bayad. So, you really need some time. Magtsatsagain mo talaga yan. No? Parang, ano yan eh, parang sale sa, sa tiyangge, di ba, or sa mall, di ba, yung mga sale items, yun yung mga nakatambak dyan, tapos para makahanap ka ng maganda, kailangan talaga magtsaga ka, di ba? Ganyan din sa online, di ba? You also have to, you know, invest some time. So, this is one site that provides you several links to other journals that will give you uh, the probably no baka meron doon na uh, useful for you um pag naghahanap kayo don't also limit your search to your own field no kasi minsan meron kang napupulot ng mga journal articles na nasa ibang field pero applicable rin sa inyo no so tingnan mo rin like if you're a PT professor Go to nursing kasi minsan doon mo nakikita sa mga nursing journals no go to medicine pharmacy no so it's really good to uh, search all no think ka sa mga iba-ibang ano so if if you scan the code sana makarating kayo doon sa site no uh, that yung purpose ng code is para ma store na nung QR scanner niyo yung mga site so that when you go home you can just go back to it no you don't have to memorize Uh, the the links or you don't have to google it pero kung uh, hindi na go work uh, you can just google that at home no marami naman marami pa kayong ibang sites you know, these are just examples okay so these are examples of sites where you can get uh, cases no if you're using cases for um, case discussions no ito is for medical uh, cases okay So, nandun yung case, tapos ibibigay niya sa'yo yung mga, uh, minsan may, uh, 
mayroong patient, iba-iba lang yung pagka-present, no? Yung iba talagang text, text lang, tapos nandun yung case ng patient, and then may mga guide questions, sometimes may answers na rin, may solution, so it can guide the student as to uh, how to go. So it de really depends on you, on how you will use the material, okay? Ibibigay mo na ba lahat? Yung iba, kinakat nila, no? Yung umpisa lang muna, tapos meron... Yung guide questions, they don't use the guide questions that are given. They make their own guide questions. So, may modification involved. So, really, again, the question is, what is the goal? No? Para saan ba siya? Okay. Okay. Some, some sites actually use, um, this site, no, yung Medpix, meron siyang, uh, para siyang mga pictures. No? Minsan, x-ray or... Uh, MRI or minsan picture talaga ng mga pasyente, mga sugat, mga ano. Uh, and then may case sa tabi, no? sasabihin niya, ito yung details. Tapos may mga, again, may mga guide questions siya. So, pwede nyo pwede ring gamitin. No? Pictures as the uh, the trigger. No? So, if you're doing PBL no? or you're doing case discussions, your triggers can actually be uh, a picture. A picture of a patient or picture ng mga uh, kanilang mga x-rays or uh, MRI, CT scan, mga ganun. Okay. So, ito, med pics. No? Yan. This is an example of uh, a site where sila, ang nilalagay nila ay actual picture ng patient. No? So, ito, pinapakita niya yung fractured uh, leg or foot nung patient. And then there's the information is there on top. Okay. And then again, at the bottom, there are mga guide questions no, that they can, you know, uh, try to answer. Okay. Ito, yung sa New England Journal of Medicine, ang style naman nila is, uh, it's not actually a video, but it's a series of um, parang illustrations, para siyang animation, no? Pero ano siya? Uh, hindi siya gumagalaw, no? It's it's really not a video, so it just really helps to illustrate yung nakalagay dun sa. So hindi lang siya plain na sinasabi lang yun na this is the case of a 33 year old woman, yun. So may 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 illustration, so mas engaging, di ba? Mas engaging siya. Uh, even the titles of the the cases hindi siya yung outright, no? So, the unusual cause of leg pain. So, ganun siya. So, medyo ano siya, medyo mas creative ng kaunti, no? But these are actually not videos, no? Ito ay parang snapshots siya. And then, as you go along, nagbibigay siya ng information, and then, at some point, it will ask questions. And to be able to move forward, students have to answer the questions to move forward to the case, no? Now, uh, when we do case discussions, we shouldn't really also limit to clinical cases, no? Because we also teach ethics, we teach uh, management, we teach uh, different professional values, no? So that we may not be able to elicit in a clinical case. So we can use cases that are sometimes, ano nga eh, uh, business case, no? So, um, I always promote WDI because I trained with WDI. So, kaya ko siya inaano, inaano palagi. No? So, WDI is actually a publishing company who publishes cases. And they started out with business cases, but now they're venturing out to other fields. No? And they have developed a Philippines case collection where they trained, uh, I think we were about, four batches of 40. So that's about 160 uh, participants whom they trained. And at the end, for free, you know, they trained us for free, but at the end, our payment is to write a case no, for them, which they posted, uh, which they have here in the WDI Philippines case collection. And this is free. You know, so you can use the cases here without charge. Um, so, papakita ko lang na yung mga cases is usually business. Pag makikita nyo, business siya, pero pwede nyo gamitin kahit mga business case. 
kasi sometimes it's talking about values of um uh, of priority say priority planning may mga ganun siya leadership no it's talking about that that we also need no kasi importante naman yung yung uh, yung content you know so but there are mga health cases like yung a kidney for a life no it's about yung uh bis, yung in business ng pagbebenta ng kidney na ginagawa ng mga tao no so actually ang the case is about really asking students about uh is it uh parang is it right no do you think it's right for that for Julio to you know sell his kidney because he needs the money eh, for his child who is sick so it's actually talking about uh, values, no, and ethics. No? Uh, tapos si Ferds kasi is also from UP Manila, no. But he, uh, her case is about uh, community health and development programs. So may ganun din. No? Yung case ko kasi yung to whose heart's content is an H pet case actually. So it's it's uh, a case on content organization and selection in curriculum planning. So kita nyo, so it's halo halo siya, no. So you might want to explore WDI because you might see mga cases like, and you'll see that the cases there that we write are very interesting. It's, these are stories, no? Parang storytelling. Okay. Yung, re yung mga books, marami na ngayong books na libre no, sa internet. Kailangan lang, uh, yung iba kasi pangit yung pag, yung iba sinascan nila eh, tapos Kaya di ba pag tinitin mo, ang pangit, tapos ang bagal mag-load, no? Yung iba na. So you really have to also be quite selective in terms of uh, looking for free books, but there's so many free books, no? Ingat na lang sa virus. Kasi yung mga libre, minsan may virus na kasama. May libreng virus. No? So eto these are reference books. Uh, ang nakita ko dito sa site lang na to, marami siyang, ano siya, Iba-ibang fields, no? may medical books, may nursing, may public health, may pharmacy, no? may, uh, uh, ano pa ba yung nakita ko dyan? Parang yan, no? medyo marami siya, may, may marami siyang kinocover. Okay, now graphic organizers, as we said, are visual representations. No? Um, and again, what is important in a graphic organizer is the relationship between concepts, no? na mapakita nila how one idea is related to the other no and uh and usually yung graphic organizers pag student need parang mas na maximize siya because mas na engage yung student and you are push pushing your students a little higher in terms of their thinking process no hindi lang listening to the lecture but at the end be able to you know put together what they understood from the lecture and express it in a diagram or in a map, in a mind web uh, or whatever. Okay. So, what important in a graphic organizer is the clarity of visualization because it's a visual representation. So, kung hindi hindi klaro, di medyo mahirap, no? Hindi niya ma-achieve yung kanyang goal, no? And the emphasis here is the establishment of relationships between concepts. So, uh, a mind map is an example of a graphic organizer. No? Sino po dito yung gumagamit ng mind mapping? Wala. So, this is actually a good activity that you can do with your students. You can make them do mind maps or pwede mo silang bigyan ng mind map, which is the mind map of your own. Or you can get mind maps that are already existing. No, May mga existing mind maps na. Okay. So, pwede. And then you can just ask them to comment, no? Anong masasabi nila? Or if they were to modify the map, anong modification, etc. It can also help them when they study, no? Uh, paano nila in-organize yung uh, concepts. No? Okay, so ang makikita nyo sa mind map, uh, mind maps always begin with the main concept or main idea at the center. No? And then from that main idea, parang nag uh, nag expand no into sub topics and sub sub topics no so it's really like an outline that is not boring because an outline is parang 
text na dere-derecho lang. But if you visualize the outline, it becomes a mind map. Kasi it shows you uh, ano yung magkakagroup. Alin yung, di ba? Uh, mind maps uses colors to represent um, which concepts are together. Okay? Minsan pa yan, sa ending, minsan nagaganon. No? So that one topic here, kumakabit na sa kabilang topic. And so it shows how all the ideas are interrelated. Okay? So it uses, it can use words, it can use images, uh, and then symbols can be used. Okay? And it shows really connection. Okay. Itong QR code na to will bring you to the site which will show you how to make mind maps. Okay. Nandun yung step by step parang procedure as to uh, anong gagawin mo para mag makakreate ng isang mind map. Okay. Okay, so you can scan it or just take a picture pa direct. So you you can do it, no? You can make mind maps for your lessons or you can let your students do it or you can get available maps already. So this is one site, no, it's called Coggle. And in Coggle, dito, pwede kang gumawa, pwede kang mag-upload, pwede kang mag-download ng mga maps sa gallery niya. Okay? Pwede kang mag-share ng map mo. Okay. Ngayon kasi, yun na yung, uh, kung dati, sa in, parang ang purpose ng internet ay para kumuha tayo ng information. No, but nowadays, the internet is for sharing. No? So it's not just for you to get, but for you to also post your own works. No? So a lot of the open access sites now are like that. No? Pwede kang kumuha, pwede ka rin. So even YouTube, eh, diba? you can download videos, but you can also post videos. No? Ganito rin tong Coggle. No? Uh, may templates na rin siya that you can use for mind mapping. Uh, then you can share your maps and you can download already uh, existing maps. Okay. Now, concept maps, on the other hand, medyo similar to mind maps. But concept maps are more hierarchical. No? Yung mind maps kasi parang from the center, pa ganun siya, no? palabas. But concept maps are pababa. No? It starts from the top and it goes medyo hierarchical pababa. And um, the difference also is that in concept maps, you have what you call your linking verbs. No, these words, no, hindi lang siya arrows from one concept to the next, but there are linking verbs that tell you what is the relationship of this to this. Okay, uh, what is the relationship of that concept to the next? Okay, so through the via the linking verbs. Um, unlike sa mind map, hindi kasi kailangan eh. No? Basta may link lang siya. Okay. Ito, sinispecify nga. What is the relationship? Okay. So, those are your concept maps. Yung concept map, no? uh, ako, this is what I also use. No? Yung concept map and mind map naman, you can also go low-tech na pwede naman talagang i-drawing lang by hand. No? <laughs> they can really do that. Pwede naman. No, but dahil baka napapangitan na, kasi marami sa estudyante eh, hindi na marunong magsulat ngayon no because they don't really you know write anymore gusto nila lahat na sa laptop na sa tablet na sa phone so these are templates that can be used to make mapping easier no kasi yung iba i remember my students kasi i give them uh, a project or assignment to create a concept map tapos ang tanong ng mga medyo uh, older students <laughs> ang tanong nila paano pa gumagawa ng mga box tsaka ng mga uh, so, so it might, the question might be simple, but if you're making a concept map, toxic yun ha, kasi ang dami nung squares and rectangles at ang daming lines nun, kung isa-isahin mo yun, eh anong oras ka na matatapos nun, di ba? So, these apps can help, no? Because these provide you with templates already, no? Uh, CMAP is just one, marami pang iba, Okay. So it just depends on you kung ano sa tingin niyo yung mas bagay sa inyo. Uh, what you think is more flexible and more easier to understand, no? So ako I use this. So again, 
ang emphasis hindi ako techie ah <laughs> pero ito na iintindihan ko so it, so that's why i use use the c map pero marami pang iba okay now digital media sabi nga natin parang kaya para sa actually pinaghalo mo yung traditional resource mo and your graphic organizer and then put it together so that it becomes more interesting okay so kaya your digital media would have audio it would have video may visual presentation and ang added value niya pa is that yung access because you can access it anywhere no because it's digital no? uh, you can access it on real time diba parang ngayon we're being streamed live so even if people are not here they can still listen to the lecture so na hindi yun possible before no? for you to be able to listen to a lecture you have to be physically there no kaya nga uh, baka nga dadating ang panahon talagang wala ka nang kausap sa classroom kasi everybody will you know be sa sobrang grabe ng traffic dito ka na lang sa bahay doon mo na lang gagawin lahat no even your work no in school okay um so what are the important considerations in digital media no so one of course is yung feasibility niya no technically is it feasible no because again kagaya ngayon kung walang internet hindi mag-work yung ating mga QR uh, scanners di ba so if yun yung plano mo mag-access ka sa YouTube para mapakita mo yung lecture mo na sa video. E, paano kung walang net, di ba? So, ganun siya, eh, no? So, kailangan, it should be technically feasi feasible uh, in both issues in terms of the hardware that is needed at saka yung capacity nung gagamit. Okay. So, again, we look at teacher and student technical capacity. <laughs> Ang teacher, ang mas important sa teacher kasi yung issues on selection and generation. No? Ano yung capacity niya in terms of being able to select and being able to generate. No? Gusto niyong maggawa ng online course. No? But are your teachers capacitated to you know create materials for the online course, manage the materials, and manage the course online? Because it's very hard to just join the bandwagon. No? Sasabihin natin, eh lahat na ng eskwela ha, nag-online, mag-online na rin tayo. Pero wala ka namang resource. Resource in terms of hardware and resource in terms of people. No? You have to also capacitate your people. Okay? They, they have to have the skill. Okay. At yung tiyaga. <laughs> The learner naman, siyempre, ang issue sa learner, because our assumption is that our learners are, uh, techni uh, are technology uh, natives. No? They were born with the internet already. They were born with computers, gadgets, etc. So, ang issue ay how they will access it. No? Through what? Should be something na na-access sa phone, sa tablet, um, meron ba talaga silang access to the internet no um so maraming issues na ganoon na kailangan nating pag-isipan kasi hindi naman natin pwedeng i-assume palagi that everybody no kasi lagi minsan ang assumption eh they will have access kasi ang jeepney driver nga naka-smartphone eh hindi estudyante pa e, malay mo wala siya no yung phone niya ay hindi smartphone di ba so magkaka-issue yon in terms of access. Second is issues about considerations on copyright and ethical practices. No? Kasi nga ngayon, everything is out there. No? So, hindi mo na ngayon malaman kung pwede nga ba itong ikalat o hindi. No? So, laging ganun. Lagi dapat nating iniisip yun. Is this, am I stealing from somebody when I do this or not? No? So, you always have to ensure that you are upholding copyright laws you are uh, protecting human participants when you are using human participants in a material like for example if it's a patient gagawa ka ng video no sabi mo gagamitin ko tong case sa aking case discussion tama tama may patient ako i-video ko yung patient ko pero hindi ka naman nagpaalam dun sa patient no so may uh, may medyo unethical yon no so you have to go through 
the ethical process. No? So always ask permission if you're going to take a video, even audio record. If you're going to use a tool, di ba? Papaalam ka doon sa gumawa ng tool. If you're going to use a journal, you can also email. If it's not an open access journal, you'd have to have to ask permission, no? Or you check whether uh, am I, meron ba akong inaano na copyright law? No? Kaya minsan yung sabihin sa'yo, oh, alam ko kung saan sa site makakakuha ng libre, pero may bayad dapat yun, pero libre. Nakakaduda yun, no? Because uh, dapat binabayaran yun eh, di ba? Even using, let's say, uh, uh, mga software na fake, no? Alala ko na sa Jante, ako bumibili ako dyan sa Pedro Hill ng mga fake na SPSS, or, kasi 50 pesos lang eh, di ba? Pero you really notice na minsan nagahang siya, or minsan, at minsan natatakot kang, nako, baka ma, ma, ma sense ako ng SPSS at ng IBM at ako yung makulong, di ba? May mga ganun na kasi medyo mas, mas magaling na sila ngayon ng ganyan. And actually, uh, sabi ko nga, this, when was that? Uh, I think when I was, nung tala, nung when I was doing my PhD, at syempre nga, ngailangan na naman ako ng SPSS. And my SPSS na, na fake ay anong, num, anong edition pa yun, no? parang SPSS. 10 pa ata yun, o 9, di ba? So, eh, 20 something na ngayon, di ba? So, and I realized, oo nga, no? so if you are, especially if you're a teacher, nakaka mahirap na gumagamit ka ng fake kasi what kind of values are you imparting on students, di ba? So parang may ethical issues din yon. So you really have to convince your school to buy the copyrighted ones. No? Dati rin dito sa UP, mga fake lahat ng mga windows namin eh. No? But now we realize, oo nga, no? If you're in a teaching institution, hindi ka dapat gumagamit ng fake, di ba? Siguro sa bahay, okay lang kasi ikaw lang naman yun. Eh. Or for personal use, di ba? But if you're going to use it to teach, then that's, a, I think, a different, ano, altogether. Okay. So you have to make sure that whatever you use is something legal. No? Nakakaya na mahaba nagtuturo ka, may papasok na, ano, tapos under arrest ka na. No? So one uh, slide that I got from, this is from MIT, I think. No? Um, ang tanong niya dito, ayan, can I use it? No? So yun ang tanong. So if it's covered by copyright, diba? if it's covered by copyright, yes. Pero ang tanong na next ay, is your intended use already permitted? Kasi minsan, copyright siya, pero kunwari sasabihin niya, um, kagaya yun, yung mga articles, pag full article, you need to buy. No? Pag abstract lang, pwede. So, may mga limitations kasi. Or sasabihin niyang, pag for classroom use, pwede. But if you're going to, you know, use it uh, na pagkakakitaan mo, kailangan mo bumili ka, no? Parang ganon. So, kailangan alam mo yun. Um, is, is your intended use a fair use? Fair use meaning for everybody. No? So, kung for everybody yan, no? then use it. Pero kung hindi, then you have to seek permission. So this is parang an algorithm of uh, how you will decide kung ano, gagamitin ko ba o hindi. No? So parang, para hindi ka minsan, kaya yung iba, para hindi na sila mahirapan, talaga they just go to open access sites. Because, because open access is open for everybody. Okay. Um, there's also what we call yung Creative Commons. Yung Creative Commons, these are platforms that are open access. Okay? And that, yun nga, ganun ang style nila, sharing. No? Sharing of information. And these are uh, the different organizations that are involved in the Creative Commons. No? Tapos meron, they're guided by uh, certain guidelines and uh, laws no? in the Creative Commons. So I'm sure you're very familiar with Flickr. If you scan pala the code, pupunta kayo dun sa site ng Creative Commons, tapos nandun din yung page na yan, pwede nyo i-click bawat isa so that you find out, ano to, ano to. Ginanon ko nga rin yan eh, inisa-isa ko. Kasi, ay, ano to, ngayon ko lang narinig yan, no? Uh, so, Flickr, we all know what Flickr is, no? We can get images from Flickr. Oo nga naman, no? Nung 
kino-compare ko siya o oh, nga ang gaganda ng pictures niya sa Flickr as compared to Google Images for example no. Um yun nga lang in Flickr talaga there are certain pictures that you need permission and that there are certain pictures na pang ganito lang, pang ito lang. No kailangan medyo ano siya mas strict no. Um then Bandcamp is actually for audio for music no, free music. Um, yung Wikipedia, you all know what Wikipedia is. YouTube also. Yung 500, ano rin siya, parang uh, halo-halo yung pwede mo makuha doon. No? Uh, yung Internet Archive, mga archive, so mga luma, lumang uh, materials. So kung gusto mong mag-aral about the history of ganyan, nandun, no? doon mo makikita. Uh, Vimeo, these are videos, no? iba-ibang kasing videos. Um, yung Wikimedia is like Wikipedia, but it is... Uh, digital media siya. So, hindi, di ba ang Wikipedia, ano lang, uh, mater reading materials. Ito, it has videos, uh, may mga interviews, may mga lectures, may mga iba-iba. No? Um, and then, FMA is uh, also, a, I think, a music site. no Free music then. Yung Skills Commons, puro courses. Yung nasa Skills Commons. No? Na, depende sa skill na gusto mo. Merong mechanics, may Uh, plumbing, may ang dami. Iba-iba talaga. May cooking, may iba-iba. Tapos talagang full course siya. And it's free. No? Um, boundless is also like that. It's, um, these are courses, no? mga lessons talaga. Uh, again, it's free. Um, yung Europe, Europe, Europana, this is parang an arts uh, site. No? Puro mga about the arts and fashion, mga ganun. So, videos, pictures, articles about arts and fashion. Um, yung uh, Tribe of Noise is for audio, all, again, for me, for uh, music. Yung, yung Jamendo, ano siya, meron din doon yung mga pwede mong music that can be used for, ngayon, if you're producing a video, tapos gusto mo ng background music, uh, they can provide, meron ka makukuha doon, download mo, na, ano, hindi, Ko, hindi na covered ng copyright. Kasi di ba ngayon, especially music, uh, hindi na pwede ngayon yung basta kukuha ka lang ng music tapos gagamitin mong background. No? Kasi isusuka nung may-ari nung kanta. Sisingiling ka niya talaga. No? So you really have to pay if you want to use a particular song in your video or in your... So here you can, meron siyang mga music that you can use that is not covered by copyright anymore. It's fair use already. Um, and then the MIT Open Courseware is like an open educational resource no, by MIT. No? And again, may mga courses doon. Nakakatuwa, yung iba nga nilang courses doon, as in, yung usual course in the semester na video lang nila, every, nakikita mo, nagbabago yung, yung damit nung, ano, eh, nung teacher. Tas yung, he's really just going about his class and they're just taking a video of that. Tapos kinat nila into smaller por portions. And it's the entire course na pwede mo talagang panoorin yung the entire thing. And tapos, pero merong mga assignments, may mga worksheets, there are uh, assessment tools, no? binibigyan ka ng mga quizzes, and then there are materials to download. The lectures are just there, it's available, it can be downloaded, and it's free. No? Uh, and then, Plus is, this has, ano, mga researches, no? research and articles. No? Uh, research articles yung nandoon sa plus. So, ito yung nasa Creative Commons pa lang yan. No? Mamamatay ka na dito pa lang, eh. malulunod ka na. No? So, <laughs> that's why it's really parang, uh, kaya if you're not really into this, you have to take it really kind of slow. Because, um, like me, no, I'm not really techy. No? It, I tend to get too overwhelmed kapag ha, masyado marami. Kaya, I just limit it to, oh, dito na lang muna ako. No? But you just have to be open that, so that you know na, ah, there are still al other available uh, platforms. Okay. So this is the MIT Open Courseware, yung sinasabi ko kanina. No? So maraming courses. No? There's a lot of lessons um, available there. Kaya, kasi kung makikita nyo, ito rin yung tinuturo ko. <laughs> Why not? No? You, you can actually use that so that students can already, you know, Uh, watch that when they're, sabi nga, flip, no? Watch that at home, and then when you come to the classroom, then you have engaging activities already. You can, 
hindi na kayo magle-lecture, uh, you'll just go right ahead to discussions. No? So, mas na ma-maximize yung inyong time. Okay. Of course, our very own UP, Open University, also have their own uh, open resource. No? Yung, open, yung mga OER, you might uh, come across yung mga tinatawag nilang OER. Yung OERs are Open Educational Resources. Uh, these are, ano rin, parang mga platform, common, uh, commons na, na platform ito na. Although these ones are organized and managed by uh, educ people. No? Um, kaya usually your OERs are connected to universities. No? So, yung mga, ibig sabihin, hindi, although people can share here, ina ano kino curate yung mga sine share so hindi ibig sabihin hindi lahat ng sine share pwedeng share no so, tinitingnan pa nila kung may educational value ba yan uh, and then it follows a particular format no hindi siya yung basta lang no na pwede ka lang uh, na kahit anong parang sa YouTube wala namang ano yun eh kahit anong ipasok mo doon pwede di ba so ito hindi no it has to follow a certain format meron silang ano and etc okay so this one's the one of UP Open U no, um, may mga ilang lectures na rin akong napanood dyan using the UPOU. Okay, so what else do we have to consider? We have to consider also the quality of the media. Okay, so again, because it's this is uh, already multi-sensory. So therefore, there's audio, no? Audio has to be clear. Parang ano yun, eh, minsan yung Di ba nakakainis minsan yung mapapakita ng video tapos hindi mo, ma hindi mo maintindihan yung audio? Hindi mo marinig? Di ba? Uh, so sana nilagyan ng ano, subtitles. No? Or parang if it's, let's say it's a foreigner na may accent. Tapos ano daw? Hindi mo maintindihan. Di ba? Hindi maintindihan. Sana may subtitles so that uh, makahelp. No? Uh, and then, of course, yung clarity, yung volume. Minsan, okay naman eh, pero ang hina. Kasi hindi nakadala yung teacher ng speaker. Diba? Kasi nga, yun yung sinabi natin, you have to plan it eh. If you are planning on showing a video, then you should have brought a speaker along. Kasi you know that the speaker of the laptop is not enough for everybody to hear. Diba? So, yung mga ganong... Uh, Diba, minsan pag-isipin mo, simple lang yun eh. Pero, ang laki ng impact in terms of instruction. Okay? Parang bumaba agad ang score natin. Na. And then, the tone of the voice. So, kung ikaw din, gumagawa ka ng video, diba, nakakatawa because I was making some videos of my lectures for my Cebu class. No? <laughs> because it's an online. Ano. At sabi ng mga... It was, I was having a hard time finding the right time to make the video because I live near the airport. So every ilang minutes, there's going to be a plane flying by, no? Or minsan yung aso namin, tumatahol. Eh, pag, pagod ka na, ayaw na akong pakailan mo na mo na may aso, may aeroplano. Tapos nakakatawa because nagko-comment sila doon na, Ma'am, do you live near the airport? <laughs> so, yung sabi yung narinig talaga ni, sabi ko, ay, nako, hindi talaga po pwede. So, ibig sabihin, you really need to find a place na matatanggal yung mga ganong noise. Oo nga naman. Uh, I remember, may isa rin akong video dati na nag-record ako, ang ganda-ganda na, tapos biglang nag-ring yung telepono ko. <laughs> so, ha, oh no. So, yun mga ganon, no? So, kinoconsider natin yun. Um, and then the video, the lighting, no, if you're going to make a video, importante yun kasi andun nga yung mukha mo, maitim naman, hindi nakikita. Or, di ba may video tapos malabo, oh no, or malayo, di ba yung, because remember, it, uh, parang sa pelikula yan eh, di ba? Even if you use the pinakamagandang artista, pinakamagaling, di ba? But if the Oh, the medium is not clearly, you know, presenting it to the audience, hindi nila yung ma-appreciate. So, that's very important. Even blocking, especially if you're making a video, di ba? Minsan, we make mga videos for lab classes, no? Yung, kunwari, kami sa PT, marami kaming mga demonstrations of exercises. No? Pagpangit yung blocking, <laughs> nabablock yung kamay, naba so yung student, parang nung pinanood niya, hindi rin niya 
nakuha yung tamang positioning ng hand, which is what was important. So kung yung pala yung important, kailangan is, siguro i-zoom in sa kamay or i-zoom in sa wherever. So th that's why it really needs a lot of planning. Kasi kailangan mong malaman again what is your objective. And so if that's your objective, ganun mo gawin, di ba? Eh kung yung kamay pa lang importante, hindi man pala importante yung mukha mo, it is zoom in na lang sa kamay mo. You know? So wag mo na isama yung face mo. <laughs> di ba? So parang ganun. So yung lighting, blocking, and then the visual appeal of the entire medium. Um, and yung use ng cues. No? Like if kailangan ba lagyan ng... Um, labels, yon ng ano ng uh, subtitles ba yan, may mga mga ganun, uh, you can modify existing or really make your own. And of course, you have to look at cost benefit, no? Kasi kunarin sabihin mo, uh, hindi ka nagtitiwala sa mga existing, no? Kasi sabi mo, eh kasi masyadong western, no? Ay gusto ko ano talaga, um, Filipino. Proudly Filipino made. Tama naman yun, no? But how long will that take you to make? No? At ano yung cost nun? Uh, yung effort? No? I mean, kailangan mong i-weigh if is it worth it. No? Worth ba yun? Consider mo yung time, i-consider mo yung other resources, your own, ikaw din, yung capacity mo to make one, uh, meron ba kayong mga materials to do it, etc. No? Um, Sabi ko nga, uh, our plan nga here in Entities is to, to create, uh, sana mag magawa na, no? hindi namin alam kung anong year mag darating sa amin yung, yung, uh, yung renovations, but to create a media room wherein we can really record no? and maybe put a green screen and we can uh, use that to record good videos. No? Sana nga. Ay, sorry, pati ko bumalik dyan. Okay, so uh, in terms of selection and generation, kasi dal dalawa lang yun eh. Do I select or do I generate? No? So do I select from existing or do I really just create my own? No? Ito yung mga teacher mean. Um, again, yun nga ang consideration. Di ba? Kaya mo ba? Do you have the time? Do you have the energy? Do you have the the resources to do it. Kasi if you do, then do it. Diba? But if you say, eh, wala akong time, wala akong, wala, wala akong nito, wala akong ganyan, eh di, baka naman meron na, no? then use it. No? But again, hindi natin sinasabing mas madali yung existing kasi minsan, wala kang mahanap. No? Or meron kang nahanap pero problematic kasi ang haba, ano, so you still have to modify it. No? Uh, so, minsan, kaya talagang it really depends on the context. No? May mga panahon na mas okay gumawa. Meron naman mga panahon, mas okay just use the existing. So, again, with existing, ang advantage niyan, ang dami, 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 super. No? Name it, they have it. No? Parang divisoria of ano yan. No? Kahit ano meron. Yun nga lang, really, sa dami, ang hirap mamili. No? At saka, uh, dahil nga ang dami niya ngayon, hindi na ganun ka-resource. Ano, kasi kah ngayon, may laptop ka lang, saka may internet, may magagawa ka na eh. No? Even the PowerPoint is very powerful na now. No? Hindi na lang simpleng uh, animation, animation yung mga kaya, may morphing na siyang ginagawa. Kayo ba na pindot-pindot nyo na lahat ng tabs dun sa ribbon ng PowerPoint? Sinubukan nyo na ba lahat ng isa-isa dun? Nakita nyo kung gano'n na siyang ka-powerful ngayon? Ang dami na niyang pwedeng gawin. Tapos you can share it, you can, ang dami na, no? Unlike before, talagang simpleng text, uh, mga diagrams, ikaw pa nga ang gagawa dati. Ngayon may smart art na, eh, nakaganon na. Dati ikaw pa yung maglalagay ng mga, di ba? Tapos, yung smart art, pwede mong i-animate. No? Even the animations now are, are wow, ang ganda na, no? Tapos, meron pa siya yung mga summary. Nade-divide mo na into sections. You can use zoom summary. May mga ganun na siya. Dito yun, no? Dito yun sa bandal right. You can record. You can uh, screen capture. You can screen record. 
you can record your slideshow. You can, ang dami, ang dami pwede. Pwedeng naka-embed na, pwedeng na dati, ang gagawin mo muna, record ka, nakahiwalay siyang file, ililink mo dito, di ba? Pag ganun-ganon. Ngayon kasi ang PowerPoint, nasa loob na siya lahat. So, hindi ka na lalabas ng PowerPoint. No? Uh, so, ganun lang. Minsan, pag wala kayong magawa, pindot-pindotin nyo lang lahat yon. <laughs> Tapos, try-try nyo lang. No? I think that's that's how you learn. Well, because I'm Gen X, that's how I learn. Kasi yung mga, mas pabilis ngang matuto yung mga millennials ngayon, eh, no? The, parang automatic na sa kanila yun. Okay. Um, but, even though, because nga, sobrang dami, selection is very important when you use existing resources. So you have to have a good criteria for selection. Okay? You have to always look at its alignment with the outcomes. Paulit-ulit yan. No? Hindi nawawala yan. Look at accessibility. No? Look, look at copyright. No? Palagi niyong titignan yan. With teacher-made, ang pinaka-advantage ng teacher-made, dahil ikaw ang gumawa niyan, siguro naman 100% tama sa objectives or sa outcomes. No? Unless iba ang pagkaintindi mo doon sa outcomes. Or wala lang, gumawa ka lang out of dahil type mo. Di ba? Makagawa nga ng video. Gawa ka ng video. Hindi naman pala yun yung kailangan. No? So, but that's that's the advantage of teacher made because you yourself made that. Siguro naman, it is really aligned with the outcomes or with the objectives of the lesson or the course. No? And because you made it, it's very flexible, di ba? Alam mo na, tama na yan, hanggang dito lang, five minutes lang, di ba? Alam mo kasi yung ano eh, yung, yung anong kailangan, no? At anong meron. And it's really custom fit to what you need and to what the students need. No? Unlike the existing, kasi yun na yun, minsan ikaw ang nag adjust dahil ganun yung resource, di ba? So kaya, uh, yun yung binabalance mo. Ano ba yung mas gusto kong gawin? No? Gusto ko bang mag-customize? O wala akong parang mag-customize. No? Dito na lang ako sa existing. Pero may mga ano yan. May mga, uh, meron kang gini-give up. No? Okay. May mga compromises. But, yung teacher made, dahil nga teacher made sa'yo lahat, kailangan mo ng resource for that. No? But there are a lot of applications, software that's available that's free that you can use no actually sa mismong sa mismong powerpoint meron kang pwedeng pwedeng gawin no okay. but kahit saan pa yan no whether it's an existing resource or it's a teacher made resource in the end you still need to ensure that it follows uh, the principles of outcome based education no? so if we go back to the principles. So, merong, sabi natin, clarity of focus, di ba? Designing back principle, and then the principle of high expectations, and the principle of expanded learning opportunities. No? Again, focus has to be clear. That means outcomes have to be identified and outcomes have to be clear. No? Whether it's a lesson outcome, it's a learning outcome, it's a course outcome, program outcome, lahat yan dapat identified, no? And ensured that it's all aligned, no? Kung anong ginagawa mo sakali, it liitang activity is something that will really contribute to students performing a particular role when they graduate. High expectations meaning your outcomes are of high quality because you are not producing so-so graduates, no? Meron bang meron na ba kayong nakitang list of outcomes na nakalagay doon no? uh, that students may or may not be able to do this no hindi eh at saka laging excellence no laging world class world ba? parang laging superlative no wala namang gumagamit wala naman yata gustong magdevelop ng isang graduate na hindi com competent no not so competent no meron kayang naglagay doon na we will develop a not so competent nurse, you know. Parang wala, wala naman talaga eh, no? Because if you set a, an outcome, parang illogical that you will set a low quality outcome, no? So, ang outcome mo palaging mataas. Okay. And so therefore, if outcomes are high, then everything has to be high. That means all 
all your activities and all your instructional materials also target the higher levels of thinking and the higher levels of performance. No? You cannot always be expecting students to just be listening to lectures all the time. No? Kailangan at some point aangat sila. At some point may gagawin sila. They cannot always be just memorizing things. No? That at some point they'd have to explain what they have read. Diba? Again, make a graphic organized, you know, make a concept map, you know, be able to actually apply that, no, make a project, make an e-portfolio, whatever, no. And the last principle is the principle of expanded learning opportunities, which tells us that there has to be variety. There has to be variety in terms of teaching strategies and variety in terms of evaluation opportunities for students. So, pag in natin yan sa instructional materials natin, anong dapat meron or anong dapat ginagawa natin with our materials? Well, one, we have to ensure that our materials are appropriate to the learning outcomes. No? So, kailangan swak. So, the materials should be able to help achieve the outcomes. Kasi kung hindi, eh, para saan pa, no? Why do it? Ba't ka pa magpapakahirap mag-download, download ng kung ano-anong article na hindi naman pala siya in line with your outcomes, no? Why will you take too much time, you know, making a video or downloading all these videos from YouTube, from wherever, na wala naman pala siyang kinalaman doon sa outcomes, no? So, ensure alignment always. And of course, you want that your materials are relevant, no? and that they are within a real world context no sabi natin oh simulated but simulated as close to reality as possible no if you choose cases choose cases that are realistic no uh, i think that's why yung mga bis, diba, yung mga yung mga case studies in business yung mga cases kasi nila hindi hypothetical no these are real businesses having real problems at yun yung pinag-iisipan nila. No? Parang yung mga cases natin, real patients no, with real problems, diba? but simulated because you can actually study them study them even without the actual patient being there. No? So yun, pwede na ngayon. No? Yun nga, you can take a video of the patient or you can capture the patient in a story in case form. You can take just pictures and show students pictures. No? So, parang ganon. Ang dami ng media format. Okay. But it's always, it always has to be real world. Okay. Um, it should, because sabi natin, we want high quality outcomes and high expectations. So, therefore, your materials should stimulate a good interaction with students interacting with each other students interacting with the material and with the teacher. So, lahat yun, no? may interaction. Hindi lang one way palagi na teacher telling students what to do. No? So, laging may, may interaction. The more interaction, the better. No? Because uh, it stimulates uh, higher order thinking and higher order performance from students. No? And of course, you want to provide a variety of learning experiences, no? learning and assessment experiences. So, nare kung ngayon, nag-watch sila ng video, bukas, nasa field sila, the next week, iba naman. No? So, the, the more variety, the better. No? Because you also give opportunities for, because our students have different capacities and different capabilities, different preferences. There are students who can work well in groups, students who work well alone. So, therefore, if you're always in groups, kawawa naman yung hindi masyadong magaling in groups. No? So that's why you have to vary your um, activities and your materials. Minsan group, minsan individual, minsan, you know, minsan field, minsan nasa classroom. Uh, some of it is writing, some is speaking, um, some are, you know, some digital, yung iba hindi. No? Pwede mong i-mix, match, no? so to give them different kinds of opportunities. And of course, because this is now possible, then let's maximize it and make use of it. Diba? Doon sa lecture nga last, was it last week yung TPAC, diba? 
So, you have to maximize. No? Hindi na lang yung knowledge mo of the expertise in the area or expertise in how it's taught, but also expertise in your knowledge in using technology to be able to get through to students. No? And your the, the development of instructional materials is where you will use that knowledge of te technology. Again, it doesn't have to be spectrum naman yung tech, eh, di ba? from lowest to highest. You don't always have to be at that highest. No? Ilugar mo lang yung sarili mo where you think you, you can. No? So kung halong low tech na middle, middle tech, no? <laughs> mid tech ka, o di, sige, no? minsan gumagamit ka pa rin ng whiteboard, ng blackboard. Pero minsan din naman, nagpa-powerpoint ka, nagpa-prezi ka ba? Sabi na, oh, si ma, marunong mag-prezi. No? So, kumbaga, hinahalo-halo mo rin, no? So, kaya nga ngayon, ang teacher kailangan very flexible. Na hindi ka lang uh, skilled in one area. Okay? So, if you know you're a very good lecturer, think of other ways, how can I make my lectures more interesting, more interactive. What kind of materials can I use? Maybe I can, you know, embed some videos probably, embed some pictures, embed some graphic organizers. No? Maybe I can record my lectures and then upload it in my learning management system. No? So, maraming, maraming pang pwedeng uh, gawin. No? Okay. So, To summarize, no? favorite nyo yan no, sa mga lecture nyo, in summary. So sabi natin, yung, yung instructional materials is really your content. No? Delivered in a format that is interesting to students, like a pizza pie no? <laughs> na pinag-aagawan. So you want your materials or the content to be something that they would want to get or they would want to grab, you know, so that they can interact with it, they can experience it, they can apply it. No? So, planning would be a very important uh, process, no? A part of developing your instructional materials. We said that there were three types, no? In traditional resources, you have your graphic organizers, you have your digital media, no? Your traditional single sense, usually your reading materials. Your graphic organizers are now more visual. Ang important yung relationship with concepts. And then your digital media parang pinaghalo-halo niya lahat. Nahalo-halong kalamay lahat. No? Where you engage several senses. Okay. Uh, Teacher-made resources no, sabi natin kasi pwedeng existing, pwede rin teacher-made. No? These are self-made resources. They can include even your syllabi, your syllabus is an instructional material. No? Your tests are instructional materials. So this is uh, included there. It requires time and effort kasi teacher-made siya. Eh, no? It requires time and effort. And the tools... There are a lot of tools available to assist teachers in generating various instructional materials from uh, templates to tutorials. Ang dami na tutorials dyan eh. How to make lahat. Even how to write a syllabus meron. How to write objectives. How to, you know, how, how to make a video meron doon step by step. No? How to use, di ba, may nakita kang app. Paano ba gamitin to? Di ba lang, how to use. Meron yun. No? So it's... Wala nang lusot nga ngayon eh, kasi kaya mong, kaya mong aralin on your own. Uh, there are a lot of applications and there are a lot of softwares. You just need to, you know, look. Look and try. No? Don't be scared to try. No? Yun nga lang, ingat sa virus na naman. Kasi yun yung kalaban dyan, eh, yung virus. And then, uh, but some are free, some needs to be purchased. No? So you just have to uh, see kung ano ba yung kaya nyo, you know. Uh, kung, kung mayaman kayo, sige, purchase lang ng purchase. Kasi, of course, the purchased ones are the better ones. No? Kasi complete, you get the entire package. The free ones are limited or is only available for a limited time period. Okay, and lastly, whatever material you make, 
it always has to follow or you always have to apply all the four essential principles of outcome-based education, okay? Making sure that the materials are appropriate to the learning outcomes, making sure that they are relevant to the real-world context, making sure that uh, it stimulates uh, higher-order thinking and interaction among students, and it provides a variety of learning experiences in terms of learning activities and assessment activities, and that it utilizes a variety of media formats. Okay. So, if there are any, <laughs> at this point, no, if there are any questions that come to mind, I think this is the right time to ask it. No? So, you may want to, uh, the floor is now open to any questions or any comments. No? It's, it's Again, open environment din ito. No? So you, you can take, you can also give. Okay, thank you. The, the, course, the course code, the QR code is my email address. <laughs> That's my contact. So if you missed it in the first slide kanina, if you were late, you may also ask questions through email. Okay lang, no? Uh, kung nahihiya kayo. But your teachers, wala well, mga teacher na mahihain, no? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor Gaheda. Questions po? Notice there are se several sites with a lot of ads. How do how do you manage uh, with these uh, ads that come ah, the in? The ads that come there in. So Ganun po talaga kasi free. No, when you're dealing with free sites, talaga pong maraming ads. Meron minsan yon. Minsan may button don to skip the ad or to close it. Pwede rin, no? Uh, again, di ako teki. Tim, meron bang way of, <laughs> of setting it so that the ads don't come out? Uh, you can set, parang use a setting in your uh, browser na hindi niya i-allow yung ads. No? Pwede. Okay. So if you have an IT person in your institution, Punta kayo doon, tapos magtanong kayo. <laughs> dito kasi si Tim ang tanungan namin dito. Pagka wala, paano ba ginagawa to? No? Basta tell them what you want to do. And they will assist you as to how to go about it. Kasi they know the language. No? Tayo kasi we don't know the language. But we, we know what, but the important thing is you know what you want. No? You know what is to happen. Ano ba yung gusto mo makuha? Para alam nila how to help you. Kasi I noticed there were some slides that I missed. I don't know why. Baka sa pag-link ko, na-skip siya. No? May yung learning management system, no? Not uh, a lot of schools now have their own. No? Yung mga course site na tinatawag. Uh, um, so, meron namang wala. So, if you have your own, maximize it. No? Tanongin niyo yung inyong IT people how to be part of it, no? How do you enroll your course in that site? Ano ba, paano ba yun gamitin? But if you don't have one, you can, there are also, again, free LMS platforms that are available. Ang Moodle, meron siyang free. No? Uh, ang UP kasi is using Moodle, but uh, it's paid, kaya medyo malawak yung kanyang uh, capacity, no? Yung mga pwedeng gawin. Again, kasi pag free limited, but it's a, it's a start. You can also use Google uh, Classroom. If you have a Google account, punta kayo dun sa, yung may mga tiles dito, i-click nyo yun, lalabas yung mga drive, docs, di ba? Sa ilalim nun, may, ganunin nyo pa sa ilalim, may classroom dun, yung may chalkboard na picture. I-click nyo yun, then you can already, pupunta ka na dun sa account mo sa Google Classroom, and you can actually create a course already, no? Uh, just using Google Classroom. It really looks more like a site. You can also use Google Site. In fact, here in NTTC in the past, nung wala pang VLE ang UP Manila, we were using Google Sites as our, uh, most of my naunang courses, my courses, wa course sites were in Google Sites. Free lang siya. 
and I think Google's and Google Sites now has a the new Google Site, which is really really very easy to use. Sobrang dali niya. Nagmumukhang napaka-creative mo nga eh. Eh nag-click ka lang naman ng mga template doon. Pero pag ginanon mo, wow, parang ang ganda. Parang gawa ng professional. Pero actually, nagganon-ganon ka lang mga available ng template yun eh. Nagmumukha kang magaling actually. Nakaka-boost siya ng, <laughs> ng confidence. Kasi akala mo parang ang galing ko ah. No? Pero, ayun, no? these, are, these are available platforms that will all, already help you. No? Uh, the purpose of your learning management system is to give you parang a um, ano ba, portal, no? parang lalagyan siya no? where you can store documents, you can communicate with your students, where you can uh, show, no? showcase no? iba-ibang klaseng media. It can be a document, a video, your lecture, etc. And then, communication na din, no? Uh, pwede ka mag-announce doon na makukuha agad ng mga estudyante mo. So, uh, tapos nandun lang, it's it's dedicated for the course, no? Unlike, let's say, if you use email to communicate with your students, halo-halo yung ka na sa email mo, eh, di ba? Kaya minsan, hindi mo na nakikita yung mga sinasubmit kasi napapatungan ng iba mo pang trabaho na nasa email din. But if you have a learning management system, you know that it's dedicated for that course or for that lesson. So, mas organized, no? It it becomes more organized, and the class becomes easier to manage. So. Yes. We are going to use a different um, opportunistic or predatory journals. Na, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is there a way for us to check? May ganon na kasi ngayon, no? Uh, Merong list of predatory uh, journals. Pati nga conferences, may predatory conferences na rin. Eh. Yung mga fake fake conferences na mukha ka lang ng registration fee tapos walang kwenta, no? yung mga ganun. So, uh, there's a list and then maaano mo lang, makikita mo yun kung nandun siya sa list, uh, then don't trust that 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 site. No? Um, ano naman eh, you always look at sino sumulat, saan sila galing. Kaya nga laging tinitingnan mo, it's always safe if you read journals from uh, researchers, journal articles or researches from researchers who are affiliated with uh, universities or schools. Kasi pag walang school yan, medyo nagdududa ka, no? Kasi uh, sa, paano niya ginawa yan? Saan, saan siya, no? At least kung nakalink, tapos pwede mo pa nga i-google yan kung talaga bang taga dun siya. Kasi minsan baka kung anong university lang sinasabi, no, but it's not coming from there. You can really do that, no. Kung kung gusto mo pang i further further i-check. No? So. Yun nga lang ngayon, no, kasi it's so open that er, there actually pero meron kasi like Elsevier for example has an open access. Marami siyang kinds of journals and there's an a specific journal na sasabihin niya, ito open access. So, ibig sabihin, um, people can uh, have their articles published there na depende kasi sa ano eh. Yung iba may konting review tapos pinapublish. Yung iba talagang totally no review. You can just publish it and then people who read it can make comments. Parang the review is people reading it. Yeah, it's a peer review. Hindi siya yung formal peer review as we know na they will review it before they publish it. May ganun kasi. So you just have to, kaya pag nagbabasa kayo ng journals, meron naman doon nakalagay about. Tingnan nyo muna about this journal. What is that journal about? So that you'll have a, a more or less a, a picture of ano ba to? Open access ba to? Peer reviewed ba siya? Tapos may mga scoring na rin ngayon, di ba? So, Oo, yung mga factors. No? So, may mga ganun na. Napaka-complicated na nga eh. Kasi dati, parang basta na-publish, okay. Ngayon kasi, dahil madali nang mag-publish, mad madali nang mag-self-publish, uh, may mga ganun ka nang tinitingnan. No? Kasi, of course, you want your the articles that you're using to be peer-reviewed no? or curated. Kaya nga yung open educational resource, those are safe 
places to go, yung mga OER, because these are curated by universities, no? by educators. Okay? Lalo sa atin, kasi we are educators, and we use it to teach. Kasi some, yung iba naman, they use it for their own practice. Eh, no? Tayo kasi, we use it to teach, so kailangan talagang credible siya. Any other questions? Ako, Ma'am Pechay, I would like to uh, highlight three things. Enlightening siya sa akin as I listen to you. First thing, yung instructional materials, yung chalk, sabi natin, yung chalk, yung laptop, yung LCDs, they are, they are just materials but not instructional materials. Because instructional materials, as mentioned ni uh, Professor Grajeda, they should be integrating student learning and assessment and they should be engaging. And second thing, um, Maybe graphic organizers can be maximized by teachers. Um, Nan has given examples a while ago. So examples are charts, diagrams, models, concept maps, and uh, concepts not in mind map. And so ibig sabihin, ano tayo, no? Dulo-dulo. Dulo-dulo. <laughs> Either traditional or dun tayo sa high tech. Walang gumagamit ng middle, no? So, so pwede din, no? Hindi, siya yung distinction din, no? Concept map and mind map. The mind map are just shapes and lines, whereas the concept map, they are linking verbs, explicitly uh, relating one concept to another. Ayan. And then yung lastly, yung selection of the instructional material. I guess it cuts across. Hindi lang sa traditional, bagging sa digital, and then dun sa graphic organizers. Selection of materials as emphasized repetitively. Yung Bechay, it should be aligned with the OBE principles and then should really meet our learning outcomes. Ayan. So without further questions anymore from the floor, uh, I would like to call on our chair of the Office of the Continuing Education, Dr. Melflor Atienza, to uh, give the certificate to Professor Grajeda. Okay, uh, I'm going to read the certificate. May I ask the Dean of NTTC HP to, <laughs> at the back over there, to come up, to come up, to come to the front to award the certificate of appreciation to Maria Elizabeth M. Grajeda for being our resource person during today's monthly seminar on development of outcome-based education syllabus on the development of instructional materials given this 27th day of November 2017. Signed by Memuel Pahutagana, Professor and Dean, and yours truly as Chair of the Office of Extension and Continuing Education. seminar for the week. So we'll be having uh, by February outcome-based assessment and then lastly on March assessment using IP As usual, you can get your 